you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Silver Guy Radio. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. What to expect when going to your first meeting or your first recovery meeting, your first sober meeting, first AA meeting, your first CR meeting, your first refuge meeting, your first NA meeting, your first motherfucking meeting. What do you expect when you do that? We're going to dive into some personal experience today and we're going to share with you some stories uh, of our own and some insight, of course. First, let me welcome back my good homie, Seth Manter, back on the show. What's up, Mr. Manter? How are you? What's up, Shaner? It's great to be back. What's up, family? Oh, yeah, cuz. Hell yeah. Always pumped when you're on. And I think we're going to be hearing more of you, uh, Seth. How do you feel about that? Juiced. (laughs) But we'll, we'll, we'll break that news later. Well, we did have listener and friend Amy email us the other day with a list of suggestions. And guess what number one was? Mo Seth. More Seth, more Seth, more Seth. So here you go. Seth is back. And so we're definitely pumped there. Always good uh, to have him on. Before we read a couple of the emails and talk about what to expect when going to your first meeting, be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. You can get past episodes there. Resources. You can contact us. You can help support us by donating. And you can also leave us a review on iTunes. You can't do that at thatsoberguy.com, but you can do that on iTunes, of course. If you don't know how to leave a review, fucking go on to YouTube and type in how to leave a review on iTunes. It's not very difficult. Yeah, and there's actually some really good editorials on there because I'm going to admit it. That's what I had to do. So, um, See? YouTube it up. Yeah, YouTube it. I mean, it's not, it's not hard, but if you've never done it before, it helps to get a little navigation uh uh, what's it called? I want someone to say education, a little guidance. tutorial, a little this guidance. Some guidance. Yeah. yeah, a little guidance. So go ahead and do that, and we appreciate your support, and uh, we love doing this shit, and uh, we hope you enjoy listening to it. So thank you. Now, if you have questions about whether you or a loved one may need some help, you can contact Foundations Recovery Network at 877-714-1318. Foundations has nationwide residential and outpatient facilities. They can provide a confidential assessment and review the best treatment options for you or your loved one's situation. Um, Good folks over there. We've been working with them for a couple of years now, going to conferences out in Nashville, San Diego, and um, great, great people who really care. So one more time, let me give you their phone number. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them at 877-714-1318. That's Foundations Recovery Network. We're going to get to some listener emails which will lead us into uh, today's uh, uh, topic about uh, going to your first recovery meeting. Um, I got a couple good emails this week, actually quite a few, and I really appreciate getting those. Really enjoy reading them and hearing what you guys are doing out there, how your recovery is going, how long you're into it, what questions you have. Seth and I definitely do not have all the answers. Um, That's for damn sure, but we do have some experience with a couple of things and we're always um, grateful and open to sharing those. So that's what we hope to do today. Uh, This first one comes from G from Ireland says, yo, 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 G here in um, is that don't how do you say that, Seth? It looks like Dongle. Dongle? Dongle. Dongle? Dongle. My apologies if I slaughtered that, but Ireland, all the way on Ireland. What's up to Cormac, the homie from Ireland, too? We got a couple homies over there. But uh, G says, only recently discovered the podcast for it is all all kinds of awesome. I'm starting I'm starting from scratch and flying through them. You're one sound human. If you were Irish, the best compliment I could give you is that you were one sound. And I'm just going to say it cunt. And I am a bit Irish. I don't know how much. Probably not a lot, Uh, but a little bit. I do know that for a fact. So I'll take it. I'll be one sound cunt. 
Or one sound human. How works do you know too. that's what that means? I just I, I assumed, and in the response, which I'm not going to read because we had a little bit of uh, response a- action, I confirmed that it was one okay. sound. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And I could hear it in that Ir- in that Ireland Irish accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet that sounds fucking phenomenal. Anyways, um, G says I'm into my six month. Uh, so for this newbie, it's well informative. It's currently 4:19 a.m. and I'm just. Uh, in from a gig and did not stop dancing. Uh, drunk me had the potential to have been a mess, slobbering all over the place and maybe falling flat on her ass. Screw junk me. What is she, what does she know? I do not regret the past nor shut the door on it. I'm genuinely buzzing off life and it's the best buzz ever. So uh, good shit, G. Thank you for that uh, little love right there and congrats uh, and keep the uh, the sober life up. Uh, Seth, you take this one. Yeah, well, so I just want to holler to G real quick too, man. That's mm-hmm. one big thing how I how I how I kind of roll. Like, I always remember where I came from. You know what I mean? And I was definitely the uh, slobbering all over the place, and for sure have fallen <laughs> flat. Um, you know, on my ass and you know on my face a couple times. Couple so garage floors. Yeah, a couple garage floors <laughs> through a glass table. You know, the the list goes on and on. But I think it's super important to remember where we came from. Um, I. I, I pay a lot of respects to that because that's kind of what keeps me from going back, knowing knowing where I was at. So, um, G, if that shit is working for you, I would honestly recommend keep it up for sure. Thanks for the email. So we got this email from Aaron. Uh, it says, Dear That Sober Guy, I just listened to your podcast, Five Things You Would Say to Your New Sober Self, and I really enjoyed it. I'm 46 days sober and listen to every podcast possible and reading every book I can to learn more about my addiction. You are by far my favorite podcast to listen to, which is really funny because I don't think I could be more opposite than you. I'm almost 50, a mom, two kids. I work as a provider in a world famous hospital emergency room. I own golden retrievers, etc. And you speak to me more than anybody. I just wanted to say thank you. And again, that was from Aaron. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I think uh, we had a little dialogue there. I always try to ask, hey, is it cool if you read the email on the show? But I think that's a good example of, you know, if you've heard the term, if you haven't heard the term, you're going to hear it now. Addiction doesn't discriminate. You got people of different races, religions, backgrounds, likes, dislikes, um, fat, skinny, gay, straight, it doesn't matter. That shit does not discriminate. And and so if we want to put things into perspective and put a positive spin on it, at the minimum, addiction is a fucked up thing. But on the other side of it, it brings a lot of people together who may have not ever connected before. So um, I know, you know, just through uh, the sober community, through the podcast, through putting myself out there, through getting sober, I've been able to connect with so many different people from all different backgrounds, and it's fucking awesome. So, yes, Aaron, thank you for that. Um, this next email is really where uh, the topic of today's show comes from. So let's read that, and we'll jump into the topic. And this comes from Ryan from London. And Ryan and I have talked. Ryan and I have talked a couple times. He reached out months ago, and so it was cool to hear from him again and, and follow up and. He says, yo, Shane, thanks for another epic show. I wanted your opinion. I've always been, when sober, the the shy type. I will also always avoid being seen in a negative way or be afraid to ask for help from as the people in my family are old school and guests. And I guess that's the way I was brought up to kind of grind and deal by yourself. I just burped again. That's like the third episode in a row. I burped right in the mic. I tried to like stray away a little bit, but um <laughs> You know, that's how, that's how it rolls sometimes. So anyway, Ryan says, you always mention, get help, go to a meeting if you need to. And I'm really struggling. So on Friday, I decided to take your advice and go, but I found myself walking up and down the street back and forth for an hour and never went into the doors to the AA meeting. And I was fucking ashamed. I know I need help and I know this won't work without going to meetings if I want to stay sober. Do you remember finding and going to your first meeting? Do you remember the moments leading up till you walk through those doors? I'm scared as hell. I guess I don't know what to expect. I guess you can hear the back and forth going in my head. Yes, damn good point. I know Seth and I have been through that shit is I don't really trust people, but any tips leading up to walking through those doors, keep yourself and the family. Well, cheers, Ryan. So dude, such a good uh, topic for discussion. 
Um, bro, you're not the first person who has gone through this, who's going through this. And I guarantee you there's probably 10 plus people listening to this right now who are thinking the same thing going, holy shit, that's me. So let's kind of start here, Seth. Um, well, what was your first meeting like, or what maybe talk about it leading up to the anticipation? I know kind of both of our situations are different. So what are your thoughts on Ryan's email? Let's kind of start there. Yeah, so um, there was a couple of things. Actually, all of it really spoke to me. Um, you know, when I first uh, started in AA, and even to this day, man, like, I feel like I'm most definitely the shy type. Um, you and know, I, and I think I think a lot of that comes from being ashamed of the acts that I, I was taking while I was drinking and whatnot. Um, so that that word is shame and shy in my mind, go, go hand in hand with each other. Um, I think, I think the biggest thing for me was beginning to, um, accept, um, that, you know, an AA meeting or a meeting of some sort, some sort of fellowship was exactly what I needed. Um, now that's not to say that because I accepted that I needed, that it was fucking easy by any means. Um, probably one of the hardest things I ever had to do, um, aside from accept, you know, accepting the fact and admitting that I needed some fucking help, man. And that I couldn't, I couldn't do this shit on my own. Um, so that goes back to the grinding and dealing by yourself, man. Like this fucking addiction, uh, alcoholism, it is fucking crazy. And the moment that you think that you need to deal by yourself, um, you know, I, for me anyways, that, that opened up a, a, a Pandora's box, right? It, uh, turned on the fuck it radio in my head, you know, saying, man, you're not fucking, you don't need to go to this shit. Um, so, so yeah. So the ashamed, the ashamed and shy, man, like I, I, that definitely resonates with me. Yeah. A lot of stuff there too. For me, I know one of the questions was, what is that feeling like before you walk through the door? Um, And, you know, there's a lot of resistance there first. I mean, they always say the first step is admitting you have a problem. Well, like in my case, Seth was actually the first person who took me to a meeting and I didn't, I knew that I was fucking up and that I I knew there was some issues there, but I was not ready to say that I had an, an, an addiction uh, to drugs and alcohol by any means. Um, I can remember walking through the doors And my first thought being, I'm not like these people. I don't need to fucking be here, but I'm going to sit here because my homie brought me here. And I know there is some shit that's going on. That's, that's probably not good. So what's it going to hurt? But I was definitely not ready um, to do that. Now we fast forward. I, I don't know how maybe two years when I went to rehab and now in rehab, you're forced to go to meetings. You have to go to a meeting every day in rehab. So that really got me used to, um, you know, to, to, to being in, to being in that setting. And I actually started to enjoy it because it gave me a sense of belonging and a sense of comfort right there. Uh, but at first, man, it was a lot of cigarettes and coffee, <laughs> lots of standing outside smoking and drinking and uh, drinking coffee. And so, I mean, that's, that's one thing that's kind of that classic cliche of, Oh, what do you do at an a meeting? You smoke cigarettes and drink coffee or whatever meeting. Um, that's kind of a running joke and that's not the case. It depends what meeting you go to. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing too, you know, looking back, I think, um, for me was on my way to the meeting, I was already taking fucking inventory of the people that were in there and I hadn't Mm -hmm. even met or seen anyone yet. So I was mind fucking myself like, dude, I'm about to go into this AA meeting with a bunch of fucking junkies and a bunch of, you know, people that are, you know, living in the gutter. Like I didn't, I didn't think of the people in the AA meeting as myself. I I totally had that whole, um, misinterpretation of who these people were. So on my way to the meeting, I was already building up to that. Like, man, I have no, nothing in common with these fucking people. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Look at these losers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I <laughs> think I think, the, I think the biggest thing for me, man, I, I really had to realize 
that I had to stop taking inventory before I left my fucking house, right? And I had to have a super open mind. And that didn't that didn't come to me overnight. Yeah. What's Joe doing right now? Joey's crying. He Joe, wants to go are out you okay, and chase buddy? the squirrel. Oh, do you see the squirrel? We got Joe. Joe hanging out with us today. He was just sitting under the table, and then all of a sudden he got up. He must have seen the squirrel. Squirrel! Get him, Joe! Get him, Joe. Oh, Joe's so awesome. You know, Mel and Seth actually found Joe on the side of the road. I don't know, maybe five years ago? How, how long ago did you find Joe? Yeah, so we've we've had Joey for probably five years now, but he's five. um well, shit nah, he's like seven. But yeah, he was he was lost on the side of the road and going back to the fucking inventory, like I wasn't taking his inventory. I wasn't thinking like, <laughs> man, I ain't gonna pick that scroungy ass dog yeah. up. Yeah, he yeah, I he picked that up. motherfucker up because he was he was in need. Yeah. He he's like a completely different dog today too than when you guys found him. I mean he was he was skinny. You could see his his fucking ribs. He was skinny, man. Yeah, he was he was skinny and dirty and Yeah. Love it though. He's a good dude. Yeah. Good dog. Good dog, good dog for sure. Good dog. But um I think kind of what you were saying too to wrap it up in a, in an old another saying is if we're looking for the similarities, we're going to be a, be a lot better off than we're looking for the differences because it's easy to go into any environment, whether it's a party, a restaurant, church, a meeting, the grocery store, wherever the fuck you're at, and look for the differences in people. But when you start looking and, and you listen to people talk and you hear, I mean, everybody's got a story. When you start listening to people, you, you can find that there's similarities there. And that's what you got to look out for the first time you go into a meeting, at least for me, as soon as I started to do that, they started to make some more sense to me too. And I had a fucking appetite for sobriety at that time too, especially when I went into rehab. I did not give a fuck what anybody thought, what anybody was going to say. I mean, I got to say at, at first there was a little bit of reserves when I was deciding to go, but once I was there and I was committed, I did not care. There was nothing that was going to stand in my way of getting sober and staying sober, you know, obviously staying sober, that's a daily thing. But, um, you know, initially I think that's a big, a big thing. And, and like Seth, I'll, I'm going to let you kind of take this because you mentioned it earlier. And I think it's a huge point is being seen, like being seen in public, going out in your community and letting, you know, the fear of somebody knowing, you know, somebody that knows you, um, and recognizing you and seeing you going into this meeting with these fucking junkies or however the fuck you want to put it, which isn't the fucking case, but obviously we, you know, that's, that's the way society is kind of, um, branded people in recovery to some extent. Um, I mean, I, I kind of said, fuck it. I don't really care. What, what was your take on it? Yeah. I mean, I, I went into my first meeting in, in Virginia kind of, it was a, a forced thing because I was in Virginia. <laughs> Cause I was in my, my, uh, it was my first attempt at rehab and I, I was forced to go. So, um, the first, the very first meeting, I didn't really, I didn't really have, I, didn't, I wasn't in my hometown. I didn't know anyone from Adam. Um, but I was definitely taking the inventory like, a, like I, like I was talking about. Um, what, I'm sorry. What was the original? Well, so I was talking about, um, similarities and differences and then we were talking about being seen in public. But before you get into seen in public, being seen in public, we probably should have laid this out just for maybe somebody who's really new. Like, what is taking an inventory? Like, what are some of the things that you were doing? Explain taking an inventory just for somebody who might not really understand what that means. So just, I, I mean, basically it's judging. Yeah. It, I, I, I see taking someone's inventory as judging them like, oh, look at that fucker's pants or look at his dirty ass fucking shoes. Like, man, that fool needs to be here. Um, just super shallow on the surface type shit. Yeah. Um, and not, <clears throat> not even really getting to know the person or not even giving them a chance to even speak or stick their hand out to shake my hand and welcome me. Like I was already judging these motherfuckers. Um, where does that stem from? Well, I guess it's a, an insecurity thing. Yeah, at least and for it, me. That's 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 what I tied it back to was an insecurity because if I could judge you more in my own mind than what you could judge yeah. me, um, 
I'll be all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it, it's definitely, it's definitely an insecurity thing. Um, for me anyways, I know that, you know, and that's something that I still struggle with on a daily basis. I'm not, I'm not sitting up here on my high horse and saying that because I'm sober, I don't judge her and I don't take people's inventory because, you know, I think it's a human reaction right. to, for people to do that. But at least what you're saying is you're aware of it now and you can kind of check yourself when you, if you start going down that path for somebody new though, too. see, this is kind of a, a it's kind of a fucking crazy kind of part of the conversation we're getting on here too, because I know that we feel judged when we go into certain environments. So, you know, maybe Ryan, maybe someone else out there listening, how does this make them feel now? Like they're already struggling going to a meeting and now you got to walk in and you're wondering like, well, fuck, are these people judging me? And for me, that's when that attitude has to come in. Like, I don't give a fuck, like really, like straight up. Like, I don't even care. Like I'm here for me. And I'm not saying everybody has that that mindset and there's not a little bit of insecurity there still i don't really know what the right answer is for somebody how to deal with that like i don't know i know that's how i deal with it i gotta kind of go in with that punk rock attitude like i don't like fuck you i don't fucking care i'm here for me what i mean what do you think about that and then and then jump into the public thing because i know we kind of got off track there yeah i mean that that's you 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 gotta be you gotta be selfish right you gotta go for yourself um I think I'm just going to get into the public thing right now. Yeah, do it. Um, I think the biggest thing, you know, what one thing that I found, um, maybe not on my first meeting or not on my second meeting, but when I started to tell people, and probably not even my third meeting, but when I started to tell people who were close to me that, you know, they would ask or try and make plans, they said, hey, what do you got going on tonight? Oh, I'm about to go to an AA meeting. Um, the people that mattered most to me, they were like, fucking A, dude. Like, finally. It, huh. Finally, he's going to do something about... He's going to get some help. He's going to um, seek some fellowship. So, I think... I know it's I know it's hard to envision, Ryan, uh, right now. Um, because there is that stigma. And I think there's a there's a huge mo uh, movement going on and around the world that's trying to break that stigma, but it still exists, right? Like it's it's still looked at it as a negative thing. I personally, I'm very open about being an alcoholic, and I talk about it, you know, to strangers, waiters at the restaurant, waitresses at the restaurant. You know, when they ask me, you know, what do I want to drink? Like I'll tell them straight up, hey man, I'm fucking alcoholic. Give me an iced tea. When you when I found that I was telling people that the responses that I got back from the people that loved me and even strangers, they were like, man, right on like that. That is some good. That's some good stuff. Like even my old drinking buddies that may or may not have been more alcoholic than I was. Um, are still like, dude, you are fucking, you're rocking it right now. Like you're doing good. Um, so that's, that's, that's really nice to hear. And it keeps me, it keeps me going. It keeps me going back. So, um, you know, being, being the type of person that is shy and insecure with myself, I will take every motherfucking opportunity for someone to tell me, damn, that's fucking awesome. That's fucking cool. So like I said, Ryan, I know it's, I know it's hard. Um, you know, maybe the first, second, third, 50th, 150th time, but I think if you begin to accept like this is this is what you need, um, that you'll be you'll be more comfortable. And I could only I could only give that advice because that's how I roll. Like that's what I'm doing. I am I'm I'm comfortable with it. I talk about it, and then the feedback that I get is always positive. Like I have never gotten the dude you're a fucking junkie feedback from a complete stranger um so and again not to not to be on my horse and not to talk about it like it's something that's super easy to do because it's not um but know that the people that are close to you that know that you're going to aa meetings they've been knowing that you need to go to a motherfucking aa meeting before you ever went so you would probably get some props on that for sure 
Yeah, it's good shit, dude. Acceptance, man. You you mentioned it. Accept. You know, that's a big thing. Make a decision or accept it, make a decision and fucking get after it. I mean, it, it really um it can I, I think for me I can tend to complicate things a little more than they need to be. And it's it's really when I keep it simple, it it seems to work out a little bit better. Um a couple things. There's different meetings too. You know, we got AA, you got CR which is um, uh, Celebrate Recovery at most churches. Um, you can find that around the country. Same with AA, obviously, around the world. Um, Refuge Recovery, which which Seth and I have recently started digging into a little bit more, which is fucking awesome. You have NA meetings. I went to most of the NA meetings when I was in treatment because we were required to do that. I did a lot of drugs, but I, you know, it's funny for me, I... Alcohol was always at the center of everything. So that AA um, spoke to me a little bit more out out front as I got out and got into the meetings. Now, one of the things, too, that is recommended, I think I talked about this on last week or the week before, they call it 90 and 90. So you want to try to hit 90 meetings in 90 days. Did I do that? I didn't. A lot of people did. I didn't do it because I just, I don't know why. I don't have any fucking excuse. I just didn't do it. But I did go to multiple meetings a week, as many as I could, you know, um, depending on my schedule. And that's really the ultimate goal. So you just start with 90 and 90. Go to as many meetings as you can. Try to go to one meeting a day at first. And like anything, this shit takes fucking practice. You don't just show up and all of a sudden feel comfortable and feel good and whatever. It takes practice. Just like throwing a baseball or, you know, whatever it is that, that's, you, that you're trying to get better at in life, whether it's just life in general, you got to show up and you got to just go. So, I mean, you can take any one of those programs. I think there's smart recovery. What are some of the other ones? Like, um, I know, I think we mentioned, I mean, most did of the you, ones I know. Did you, uh, mention the Y12 SR? I don't know what that one is. What's that? that dude, that's the, that's the, um, the one we just did with Chelsea, the 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 oh, yoga with y- the, is that what it's called? I didn't yeah, know that's yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. Y12 SR. Oh yeah, that's an awesome one. We did yeah, we just did the podcast with with Chelsea out at uh, Ume Yoga Studio. Uh, that's a freaking great one. That was real. That, I've never done anything like that. We did a meeting and then yoga right afterwards. That was super dope. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's here's another thing too. There's funny shit that happens at meetings. Like it's not all just going there and. Yeah, and fucking bored my drunk and i'm fucking my life su- it's not always i mean yeah you're gonna get some of that shit no doubt but there's funny shit that happens too like people are hilarious like you hear some gnarly crazy stories and i would encourage anybody to go there and try to have try to make a little bit of fun out of it like back to rule 62 don't take yourself so damn serious like everything doesn't have to be poor me victim mentality i fucked up we've all fucked up we've all done dumb shit get over it, move on. And there's a new, a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. You know what I'm saying? Like, and what about cake guy? I mean, <laughs> you mentioned cake guy earlier. Yes. That shit is fucking comedy. So, so that's the other thing, right? Like you, you will see all kinds of different people. You'll hear, you'll hear, and you can judge them and yeah. take their inventory. I'm just yeah. playing. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> that goes against everything we were saying, but, <laughs> but you, it, it's crazy. Like you, you could hear yourself through, um, through them, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, Shane mentions the cake guy, right? So I was I was at a uh, a meeting uh, a, a long time ago, real long time ago, and it, there was a certain individual that would that would uh, rally go to all the meetings, right? For for the cake, right? Because he was in need <laughs> he was in need of some food, right? And he was never turned away. Like this dude was yeah, allowed yeah. into every single meeting. So that just kind of speaks to the 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 community um that we as alcoholics have created, right? Welcoming. Um and I think that if you step into that meeting and it's not welcoming, well, it's probably the wrong fucking meeting that you're that you're going to. Yeah. Um I've gone to many of those, right? Like walked in, looked around, said what's up to a couple people, got the stank eye and I was gone. So, you know, there was there's there's a lot of that out there too. Um, I think it's it, it's important to find the meeting um, that works for you best. There's all kinds of shit online. Um, there's an app in the rooms that you could log on to. They got all kinds of online meetings. Um, you know, maybe if you're having a hard time going into a, a live public meeting, 
maybe hit that, hit the online stuff up, man. Or, um, I don't know, pick up a book, read, educate yourself, educate yourself on why you are the way that you are. Yeah. That's, Um, that's huge, bro. The education. That's a really good point, Seth. Like, you know, we only know what we've been taught, what we've been told. There's a lot of personal responsibility that comes along in in this journey for me. Like I want to, I'm fucking hungry for that. I've always kind of been like that. I've always felt there's something more out there and I want to expand my mind without drugs and alcohol today. I used to expand it with, with that kind of crap. And now it's a little bit different. Like I want to know and learn as much as I can and, and, and keep soaking shit in and learn about myself and grow and all that stuff. And that is a really good way to start feeling a little bit more comfortable and when you can understand what it is that, and I'm not saying like you're going to understand it and that I understand it. I'm, I'm sure Seth would say the same thing that I don't fucking know half the time. I don't can't get my head out of my ass to be honest, but I mean, there's a, there's a growth process daily that comes with that. And, um, it comes with practice back to just like I was saying the practice. And I wanted to, to speak real quick, more on the, on the cake guy real fast because yeah hit the cake guy up dude no that's such a good there's there's much more to this than just the guy showing up every time for cake and you said it best it speaks for what type of community it is and here's the concept of this here's here's how this shit works it's not about the guy coming and getting cake every time yeah it's funny we're not poking fun at him in a bad way it's it's kind of, it's fucking great because look he keeps coming back and that's the point here is you keep coming back. They say that shit at the end of every meeting. Keep coming back. You tell a newcomer that. Keep coming back. Just keep showing up. Just show up. That's all you got to do. Let go of the expectations, the worries, the anxiety, all that shit, and just show up. And I'm fucking telling you, every time I'm able to do that, something fucking something cool happens. Like it may, maybe it's not some, you know, big grandiose thing, but it's there's something there and and the more that I do that, the better ability I have to recognize that shit too. Cause sometimes it's fucking right in front of your eyes and you don't see it, you know? Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, going, going along with that, like for me, man, it took me a long time to realize that being a member of AA or being a, a alcoholic and a drug addict, that's not who I aspire to be. And it, I found that it was super important for me to remind myself of that um, and that it wasn't my fault. Like I, I didn't, I didn't aspire to be a drug addict and alcoholic and it's not my fault. It's just the, I truly believe that it's just the body that I was born into. And then also, you know, um, one of my favorite books, man, the five agreements talks about the domestication of us. And I believe that my domestication um, caused me to become, um, you know, alcoholic for one and then, and then a drug addict for two. Right. So it's super important, um, for me anyways. And, you know, I'll pass this along to anyone else. Like this isn't what we aspired to be. And we could either. Yeah. I did not wake up and say, I'm going to be a dope fiend one day and a drunk. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's super important to realize that. And then, and then move on and, and build your new self on who you want to be. Um, and, and, and for me, you know, I have to do that shit every day. And just because I'm in recovery and because, um, you know, I do a lot of reading, I, um, like Shane was saying, get ready to start a, a, a new meeting here in town. Um, that doesn't rid me of all the, the normal, the normal life shit. Right. Like I still have to deal with all that shit, but I get to deal with it in a different way today. And I think that's the biggest thing about recovery is, is it teaches you um, or you get to learn a new way on how to feel and how to deal with shit. And that's what that's what I'm rocking today. Right. Like I'm not rocking the fact that. Oh, fuck, I got to go to this fucking meeting. Right. To stay sober. No, I got to go. to yeah, stay sober, but also maybe learn a new way to deal with some of the shit that I had to deal with today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and so, and so that's, and I love that bro. And let me even put another spin on that. The more that I understand that it's, it's less about me and more about the program and more about a newcomer. So here's the other side to this coin. Cause, cause Seth, Seth's point is fucking phenomenal. And there's one right behind it and it's about the newcomer. It's just about 
like you, you people out there who are new into the program, you are just as important as a motherfucker who has 25 years. And let me tell you why newcomers. Like when I go to a meeting and I hear some, like, uh, my, my homeboy Rob, okay. I'm uh, from, from CR. He comes in, it took him a long time to get, um, you know, to get some time or whatever. And, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And I think six months, right. And to see that and to see the, 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 you know, the, the positivity and the drive and the, the, um, gratitude and all that, it reminds me of where I, you know, where I once was because just like David would say at Azure, you forget. You know, you pound that in, you forget, you forget. Time goes by and you forget. And so a newcomer to a meeting is so important because it all, you know, it's all the same in that. Um, time is really irrelevant. That's kind of the way I see it. Like it really, really doesn't matter. Um, it's like they say, it's about today. So back to the point too, like the, the more I understand it's less about me. Man, that's a hard thing too, because we're selfish fucking human beings. Like that's not, there's a certain way that our brains are right. It's about self. Like we think about self. What am I going to do? What do I want? I need to eat today. I need to shit today. I need this. I want that. I have desires. Like all, we're, our brains are kind of wired like that. And especially like you, like you were saying, Seth, like the domestication part of it growing up, these seeds are implanted in our brains. We're like going back as adults, having to rewire this whole thought process. Um, that's not an easy thing to do. And so I think for me, the more I give myself a little bit of grace with that and just understand that um, I'm not perfect at it and I'm probably never going to be perfect at it. And it, it's just, it's a process. I'm in process. I'm fucking in process. It's an important thing. I want to tell some stories though, man, but I can't think of any too. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't have, I don't have any, as any I know there's stories some funny ass there. shit, I mean, man, but like meetings are fun sometimes, you know? Yeah, and and the other thing is too, man. Like one thing that I was thinking about today, as as we were, you know, kind of prepping for the show or whatever, is, you know, I had no fucking problem walking into a bar full of strangers, bellying up and ordering a fucking drink, and before I know it, I was buying that whole bar drinks, mm -hmm. right? And I was trying to think of, you know, why that is so different and why that is so hard for why it was so hard for me to walk into a, a room full of strangers um, and kind of just not even have to talk, but just hang out, just yeah. be there, be present. Um, and, and, and going back to listening to, you know, the similarities because, you know, the first, my first attempt at rehab, it was forced on me and, and I didn't want it. Right. My second attempt definitely wanted it so i knew that that was the the meetings was something that i i needed to do i had to do whether it was uncomfortable or not and you know like i said man probably the first 30 40 meetings i went to fucking sucked like <laughs> not because of the meeting but because i was i was sitting in the back judging people you know they sucked because of my own look at this motherfucker pants are all tight and yeah, shit yeah yeah He's probably drunk right now. <laughs> oh, that fool's high as a kite. That's the, that's man. We get some crazy ass thoughts going through the cranium. Crazy ass shit. Sorry. I fucked you up. on, on, the, on the daily. But again, you know, it's, it's like we were talking about the progress, not perfection, right, man. It's always, if I could be less judgmental in the next 10 minutes than I was 10 minutes before now, like I'm progressing. So it's always, I'm in process. I'm in process. We, we've we dropped some, a lot of analogies tonight. I feel like we're, we're getting into the meeting talk and it's kind of funny because in all honesty, um, we don't go to meetings every day either. So I think we should be pretty transparent about that. Uh, we, we definitely went to a shitload of meetings, um, in the first year. And then I think, well, I don't know about you, Seth. I'll speak for myself. I went to a shitload of meetings the first year. I went here and there sporadically in between those times. My sponsor was on my ass for a long time. Thank And thank you to him for that. And he was very patient with my ass, you know, about getting a commitment and, and getting back into it. And, um, you know, in fact, I meant to tell you this, bro. 
uh, my my neighbor uh, hit me up. There's a 6.30 a.m. meeting Monday through Saturday at the Alano Club that they just started um, about a month or two months ago, I think. And uh, I'm about to hit that one up. Just to, t- I'm a morning guy, dude. And yeah, that was always too. an issue like for me in scheduling, getting home, the kids, all that stuff. And I can make excuses till fucking the sun comes up. But, you know, that that early morning one is is a is a good time. Yeah. And so I, th- I think it is. I, I thank you for bringing that up and being the transparency. Right. Because, you know, um, we're not Mr. Fucking AAs by any means yeah, like no. showing up. At, so I just no. want to be very fucking clear or whatever meeting platform. It I, is. But with that being said, I think it is super important in your first 90 days that, um, you know, even if the 90 and 90 is overwhelming, you know, something that worked for me, I did like 45 and 90. Um, you know, not, not trying to go against, you know, what is normally taught out there, but if that's something that maybe you could commit to, yeah. um, any meetings in the first, you know, 90 days is better than none for sure. Well, he, and here, here's another little aspect to this too. That's, um, that's been, that's been pretty, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't even fucking know who cares, but getting a commitment. They say that take a commitment. Is it fucking doing coffee? Like whatever it is, it's not about, okay. So at first, like for me, I'm like, why the fuck am I? I don't want to show up here and make coffee for these fucks. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to fucking greet people at the door. That's that attitude, right? That non-service attitude, especially at the beginning. I don't want to do that. That's stupid. I'm stupid. I'll look stupid. It's not the point. I took a commitment at CR on Monday nights um, at the beginning of this year doing media which is something that I really enjoy to do anyways, because it's what I fucking do for a living. I enjoy it, right? I went to CR very sporadically last year. This year, I am there every single Monday night. I'm at the meeting, I'm involved, I'm doing shit. And the only reason I I will say that that I show up every single Monday is because if I don't fucking go, I mean, they have backups and shit, but if I don't go there, I'm a flake. And if I don't show up, there's nobody there to do the media. And I enjoy to do it. It helps hold my ass accountable and it, it helps me to get there. So another huge point, like find a meeting you like and take a commitment. If it's making coffee, cleaning out the ashtrays, fucking media, um, you know, fucking shining motherfucker shoes as they come through the door. Like it doesn't matter. Get something to get your ass to the meeting. Yeah. And I would say it's never too late. You know what I mean? That, that, that's one of the big movements. Why? Um, you know, I gained some interest in starting this other meeting, man, because I need something to be committed to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, here I am with a little bit of time and I'm still still trying to find those ways to commit to my recovery because, you know, my mind's fucked up. My mind is the way that it is and it will it will talk to me. It will sway me away from from the life of recovery. And I've, I've realized that, man, I need to. I need to reel that shit back in. So I think it's important, man, no matter where you're at in your, in your process <laughs> to, uh, to, to stay connected to that. And, and, and when you feel like you need it, reel that shit in. You don't need that shit, Seth. You don't need to go to a meeting. Yep. That's you're definitely a, in my mind you're right not there. A drunk. You don't have a problem. Look at that fuck over there. He's fucking hammered he has 17 duis you know that's the fucking weird shit that goes on did i think about some weird shit bro i can't even tell you right now i'd probably go to fucking jail if i talked about some of the weird shit that goes on in my head yeah my thing was man i only got i only got one dui i ain't got two like i ain't that bad you know what i mean but i was drinking every motherfucking day passing out i was a pass out drinker right so you know you used to get fucked up bro hell yeah hell black out the year i remember in Rick's garage one. That's why I thought that's why I said earlier, the garage floor, I remember just like not kicking you, but like nudging you with my foot. Like, Hey dude, are you okay? And you're just fucking just done, bro. In, in my own pu- black nah, you guys were fucking kicking me. I, <laughs> we probably were. The, the, the stories come out, right? Like you guys, <laughs> you guys were fucking kicking me dicks. Writing, writing over. Uh, I mean, that's the, the great one too. The black, marker duct tape stacking we used to stack people put a bunch of shit on them fucking food more beer blunts dude we were talking the other day we used to smoke blunts out of the bong how about that that is comedy to me i don't know why i want to talk about stories nobody wants to hear war stories i know but i think they're funny in some in some regard 
we used to do some fucking weird shit. I think me and uh, my homie Sean Beasy are going to do an episode. We talked about, I don't know what we're going to title it, but we're just going to just, all we're going to talk about is stories. Because I've war, never done war anything. Story like, yeah, just war stories. That's it. I, yeah. We've never done an episode like that before. And I mean, I, it serves a purpose. We don't do that all the time. But I think it'd be kind of fun. What else, man? What else we got tonight? Well, I think it's I think it's important to say, man. Um, I hope I hope that my words tonight were were helpful to to someone out there for sure, um, and that you know it's something that I that I truly I truly feel passionate about. You know, I will admit, tr- you know, sticking with the transparency that I'm not. I'm not always outwardly passionate about it, but it is something that I am always passionate about. And, um, it's the foundation. It's the foundation for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Cause you know, you gotta find, you gotta find some place that you feel comfortable and you're probably not going to find it the first time. And so it's, you know, you got, you got to kind of throw some, some shit at the wall before you get some of the shit to stick. So, uh, don't give up find you know try some different meetings out try some different programs out try cr try aa try refuge you know try smart recovery try whatever it is um until you find something that you that you like and don't stop till you find something and then when you find it fucking dive in and just get after i think that for me man that's the best attitude like fuck it like i'm just going all in and i'm gonna get after it i don't care about anything else and before you know it you honestly you can like trick yourself you, do, you really don't care because you're in it to uh to stay you know to stay sober to learn more about yourself that's the that's the fun shit right there yeah for sure i always i always look at my my recovery as as like i was brainwashed you know what i mean (laughs) um yeah and it's 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 kind of a fun thing because i mean it goes it goes against a lot of the the stuff that i've been listening to lately on uh you know mindfulness and um been doing a little bit of Buddhist readings and whatnot. Um, but I truly believe that, you know, I was the person that I was because that's the body that I was born into. Right. Um, over time I, I, I slowly progressed. Right. And I'm now on this path to recover my, my whole self. Right. And, and during that recovery, it, it turned into uh, a kind of a brainwashing, cleaning the brain, scrubbing me back down to my, to my original, my OG, my, my, my real self. So, um, you know, it's definitely for me, um, you know, I like to poke a little bit of fun out of it, man, you know, like, damn Seth, what's up with you? You're not drinking no more. Yeah. I got fucking brainwashed. Do you you still get that? Do you still? Yeah. I get it all the time. Really? All the time. This weekend, man, I was at a graduation party, right? And they were like, what's up? You want a beer? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nah, man, I don't drink. Now I got, the, I kind of got the sideways look, yeah. and I just, you know, look back at him, just kind of tall and proud in, in in that statement. And they were like, "Damn, that's you know, that's cool." And it's like, yeah, well, dude, f- what the fuck, dude? Like, you ain't ever heard of someone that don't drink no more. You ain't ever heard of someone that got motherfucking problems. <laughs> that's funny because that you know, they were just talking about this. I think it was Can- Candace Owens on Joe Rogan the other day, and she doesn't, she doesn't drink. She doesn't, she didn't have a problem drinking. She just decided to not drink. And they were talking about how, um, like if, if you're with a group of people who doesn't drink, it's almost like they don't trust you. They're like, this motherfucker doesn't drink. Like, yeah. what? wait, wait a yeah, second here. What's wrong? Sure. What, are you fucking, you recording us right now? Yeah. You, what, what are you doing? You, you're hustling. You're a like, spy. Yeah. What, what do you, you, what do you mean? And it is, it's like a, you're like an odd, ugly duckling. If you're not drinking a lot of the time in a, in a certain situation, I don't get it often. Um, I do get sometimes, oh, you know, to people who don't know, hey, you, you want a beer or something? And I usually just I usually just kind of say, no, I'm cool. Thank, I'm good right now or whatever. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but the times that I have said, which I, you know what, now that we're talking about this, I don't say that very often. No, I don't drink because it does do that awkward ass thing. And I don't want to fucking deal with that. I just say, no, nah, no, thank you right now. I'm, I'm good or whatever. Um, and they tend to kind of just move move about, you know, or, or continue on. But that is, uh, um, an awkward moment. You know what I mean? For a lot of people. Yeah, most definitely. And I put that shit back on them, right? They asked me for a drink. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm cool. I don't drink. Right. I see them drinking their one beer. They finish it up. I'm be like, damn, 
what's up? You don't drink? You're only going to drink one beer? Like that's, <laughs> yeah. that's one thing that I've always expressed that I don't understand is how the quote unquote normie out there could only drink, you know, could have one drink and be satisfied and be cool. But, you know, I'll always turn, I'll always flip the script on that. Like, damn, what's wrong? You fucking pussy. You only going to drink <laughs> one drink, you know? I don't, how, how can somebody drink one beer? How is Never that possible? Never understood that. Never. I didn't either. I mean, and I wasn't like, it's not like I used to crush like fucking 20 beers or anything, but I like did. you did. Yeah. You did. <laughs> and that, so that's, that's another good point, man. There's different levels of this shit. Like everyone's different a little bit, you know, everyone's got their own thing. And, um, and I think that's, that's why it makes it easy for some people to justify it. Well, I'm not as bad as that guy. Like I could say that I, well, I wasn't as bad as Seth. I didn't drink 20 beers. I only drank 10 or, you know, whatever. And, um, it was different, but I still had a fucking problem. You know, I still had my own issues going on in my mind and, and, and alcohol and drugs was just the tool that I fucking used. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Definitely tool. self, self medicate fucking coping mechanism for sure to, yeah. to get out of to get out of my myself always seeking something different something other than the way that i was feeling at a present time yeah what about the social awkwardness too dude the social awkwardness is uh that's that's a big one you know like i i i still i still have that um you know i think that for me what i what i kind of try and do is i'll i'll, I'll throw some humor into it i just you know got a I mean? boner right now <laughs> yeah so i got a boner right now or i'll, I'll crack some jokes at myself <laughs> right and kind of loosen that mode up um but there is definitely you know the social awkwardness um aspect that stands out um and i think for me it goes back to you know kind of still being a little bit insecure with myself not liking the 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 person um on the surface um, the way that I look, not, not being comfortable with that. Um, and that, you know, that just ties back to what we were talking about before is just because I'm in recovery doesn't mean I'm this, you know, whole perfect person. Like I still have to deal with my shit. I still have to deal with the insecurities. Yeah. I still have to deal with, with the life and the curveballs that life throws at you on a daily basis. Um, I just get it. I get to deal with it in a, in a different way now, which is, which is kind of cool. And we, we've talked a couple of times, both of us have mentioned, I think about going like there's, there's shitty meetings sometimes, right? You might go to meeting you might not like, there's always something you can get out of a meeting. And let me give you a good example of this. I've shared this before. I'm going to share it again. Cause it came from, it come from James Cantor. Um, actually both Seth and I had James as our counselor when we were in rehab and uh, we talk about some of the funny things at meetings and there's there's the guy who comes once a month just to get his chip, right? And he doesn't go to any other meetings. He just comes there to get his chip. Bless his fucking heart for showing up in the first place, right? Here we go. We're going to, we're going to, you know, laugh a little bit, but at least he's showing up once a month. But at the same time, he's only showing up once a month to get his chip. Well, James told the story. He was in there and that was this guy. He would only come, you know, every six months or whatever it was to get his chip and he would stand up there in front of everybody and he would spill a whole lot of bullshit and everybody in the fucking place knew that he was bullshitting. And so James was saying, what's up, Mel? How you doing? Hi, guys. Oh, yeah. We're just uh, we're having some fun talking, talking about meetings today. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, so James, so James, he get in there and he tells this story about how he's sitting there and this guy's up there spewing a bunch of shit. And um, and he gets up and he's about to turn around and walk out and his, and his sponsor grabs him and, and tells him, you sit the fuck down and you're going to sit here and practice your patience. <laughs> and so he sat back down and he made it through the whole meeting and he didn't like it, but he did. He practiced his patience. So point being is it goes back to perspective. What am I, you know, what, what am I there for? I'm there to just show up. I'm not there just for me too. I'm who knows why I'm there, but it's about just showing up and you can always get something even out of a shitty meeting. It just depends on how you look at it. I can, I can make, you know, the worst thing and I can make my day the worst day, or I can make it the best day. It really does start with my attitude. You know what I'm saying? So that that's kind of a personal choice. So point being, and I'll shut the fuck up, even a shitty meeting, you can get something good out of. Um, it's all about kind of how you, how you're going to look at it. 
True that. Ooh, I gotta take similarities, a not the differences. Yes. For sure. Similarities, not the differences. Can't say that enough. Nope. Let's wrap this thing up, man. Anything else you want to add? I hope I hope everyone um, listening today at least got one thing out of a bunch of the stupid shit that Seth and I said today. We have fun doing this. We appreciate you guys listening. Um, we got some some cool things coming up that uh, I can't wait to announce and uh, um, that we're working on. So yeah, anything else, Seth? No, I just want to say, man, thanks again for for uh, for having me on, man. I, I look, I'm I'm gonna give a little sneak peek. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to uh, being a regular um, guest slash host on the show. Um, you know, oh yeah, I, I, I look forward to uh, getting my story out there again and just kind of sharing with people, um, you know, some of the shit that they're going through some of the stuff that I get to go through in my life, um, good, bad, or indifferent. So again, man, much love for, for having me on and, and, uh, keeping me involved in that sober guy, man. I, I look forward to, to the future. Um, super pumped on it. Uh, I look forward to interacting with the listeners and, 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 um, reading emails and doing shit like that. Like I'm super juiced. Like I said, just a little ice break, a little sneak peek as to uh, what's coming up for that sober guy. Um, I couldn't hold my excitement in, so so <laughs> sorry, Shane, for stealing your thunder on on the announcement front. But look for that. Look do for it. Uh, do it. Look for the um, that sober guy with Seth Manter uh, coming, coming soon. Up. Oh yeah, buddy. I'm glad you said it. I was going to say it in the beginning. I just, I thought you didn't want to. I love it, man. I'm glad you talking about it and we're going to get that thing rolling. So there'll be a new episode coming out each, uh, each week in addition to the Friday show. And, uh, yeah, we're doing the thing, man. And I'm really looking forward, uh, to seeing, um, you know, some more content created and having some more fun. So thank you guys. Thank you, Seth, for coming on today. And, um, yeah, for more info, past episodes, support us, go to that sober uh, also leave us a review on iTunes we'll tend to read those sometimes good shit peace love respect keep your blood clean peace